in this video, you'll learn how to derive the four kinematic equations. We'll start with this velocity versus time graph. On this velocity versus time graph, we have a um, straight line. Um, the slope of this line represents the acceleration. Uh, and then using the slope equation, we can write that the acceleration is equal to the change in velocity over the change in time. So slope is just the change in y variable divided by the change in x variable. From here we can expand that and write v final minus v initial divided by, and delta t is t final minus t initial, but if the t initial is zero, we're just gonna go ahead and write t. From here, I'm going to move the t on the bottom right to the left, so we get a t is equal to v final minus v initial. If I add v initial on both sides, I get that v final is equal to v initial plus a t. Oftentimes, you'll see it written as it as it a bit flipped. v final equals v initial plus a t. So that is our first kinematic equation. For the second kinematic equation, we're going to look at the area under the curve. So we're going to look at this area right here. And the reason we're doing that is because the area under the curve on a velocity time graph represents the displacement. So the area under the curve here, we can see that there is a triangle and a rectangle. So the rectangle, um, the area of the rectangle is the base times height. Um, so we can take vi times the t, vi times the t. So that would be the height times the base. And then here we have a triangle. The area for triangle is 1 over 2 base times height. The height is v final minus v initial, and then the t times t. From here, um, you'll notice that uh, there's a v final minus v initial, and we saw that earlier. We saw that over here. So we can take this and substitute that over there. So with that substitution, we get v initial is time plus 1 over 2. v final minus v initial is a t times t. And um, if we multiply that out, we get vit plus 1 over 2 at squared. And that is our second kinematic equation. For our third kinematic equation, we remember that the average velocity is equal to change in position or the displacement divided by the change in time. And we also know that um, if we were to solve for delta x, that that would be equal to v, the average velocity, times the time. And once again, the change in time is the final time minus the initial time. If the initial time is 0, um, then you're just going to have the final time. So I'm just going to call that t. And then next, I'm going to, um, for the uh, v average, I'm going to substitute that with um, this uh, equation, v final plus v initial. Okay, so if, if it is at a constant acceleration, and which we are using these kinematic equation for, then the sum of the initial and the final velocity divided by 2. Kind of like if you want to find the average of two numbers, if you average two numbers, add them together, divided by 2. And that works for the initial and final velocity if it's going to constant acceleration. If it's not, then this is not going to work. Okay, so we're making an important assumption that we're dealing with constant acceleration. So, and then we have t here. Um, the next step is that you'll notice uh, that t is equal to, if I go, um, let me go over, go back here, over here, okay, I'm going to come back here. You'll notice that t, if I were to switch a t and a, I get t is equal to v final minus v initial divided by a. And what we're going to do is we're going to take this 
and we're going to substitute this over here to this t right there. Okay. And what that gives us is delta x is equal to v final plus v initial divided by 2 times, and then this purple, um, what's circled on the left on the purple here, is v final minus v initial divided by a. Okay. All right, it looks kind of like a mess here. Um, and then I'm going to keep going. Um, so on the top, um, notice the only difference is that one is VF plus VI, the other is a minus VF minus VI. So doing a little algebra, um, um, or you can use FOIL, you know that this will turn out to be V final squared uh, minus V initial squared divided by 2A. Okay, I'm going to go to my next page. So I just copied um, what I had from the previous uh, page here. Um, so this is where we left off. We have delta x equals vf squared minus vi squared divided by 2a. I'm going to move the 2a over, so I get 2a delta x equals to v final squared minus v initial squared. Then I'm going to add vi squared on both sides, vi squared on both sides, and that gives me vi squared plus 2a delta x equals vf squared. And often you'll see this written as vf squared equals vi squared plus 2a delta x. That's how you'll usually see that written. And that is your third kinematic equation. Actually, this is your fourth kinematic equation kinematic equation. So let's go back and just kind of recap the four kinematic equations. Um, I need to point out the third one. I didn't circle that one, but I want to point that out. All right, to recap your four kinematic equations, we have this one right here, which is your, your first one. So let me go put a little one right there. This is your second kinematic equation right here. Um, and I didn't circle this one, but this is actually your third kinematic equation. Let me go ahead and circle that one. So this right there, right there, that's actually your third kinematic equation right there. And then we have our fourth kinematic equation right there. Okay, so let me write all of these out for you so you can have them nice and neat, all four kinematic equations. So here are the four kinematic equations. Um, and also on the right hand side, um, I indicated what the variables stand for. So delta x is displacement, v is velocity, a is acceleration, T is time, um, and typically we'll be using these kinematic equations where problems are dealing with constant acceleration. A common issue students have with these kinematic equations is trying to figure out which equation to use for a particular problem. So in the next video, I will show you a kinematics chart um, that would be really helpful to help you decide which equation to use to solve a particular problem.